Okay, uh, so yes, uh, the last week we discussed the chiral perturbation theory. So we are finishing uh, our discussion on So we are going to discuss um, first uh, <coughs> self-interactions, how to describe the interaction between measurements. And of course, you have to extend it to uh, interaction between measurements and proton, or interaction between measurements and ne uh, neutron. Actually, the, the pions uh, were introduced uh, by Yugawa to describe the strong interaction between proton or uh, neutrons. So it is necessary to extend our discussion, but let me, uh, I think the, uh, today I'm going to discuss about uh, chiral perturbation theory, what is the uh, description, effective description of the measurements and uh, interaction terms, how to match to the standard model um, quarks. So matching so and then uh, Actually, eventually, uh, we are going to discuss the particle decays. The particle decays due to uh, electroweak interactions. Uh, but you can think about uh, lepton decays, purely leptonic channels. There is no strong interaction. But in our case, we need a strong interaction to describe uh, major decays. So that's why we are uh, considering uh, chiral perturbation theory. Not only we have not only leptons, but also hadrons, majorons, and neutrons, etc. So it is necessary to uh, include uh, QCD. Uh, although uh, the QCD just to uh, the gluon interactions kind of decouple uh, just bounding nucleus, nucle bounding um, uh, quarks in a composite particles. Uh, let me uh, just to start. Uh, start. Uh, let me start from some reviewing uh, our previous discussion on chiral perturbation theory. Okay. Then, and the second half of the lecture is will be about going back to the basics. Uh, so let me go back to a Dirac equation, which is easy, easy uh, to, to, things to discuss and the solutions. And also, uh, let's see. Uh, and also, some properties of the gamma matrices and complete tennis, et etc. Because non-trivial part uh, in the calculation is to deal with the uh, fermions. So I'm going to review uh, some properties. Gamma matrices. And also, uh, it is necessary to uh, introduce quantum field theory uh, because we need to define particle states from the field. So it is necessary to discuss the uh, quantization of the scalar field and the uh, fermion. So it's nothing but this is a, we are going to discuss basics of uh, QFT. And then we are going to uh, uh, discuss uh, directly uh, the scattering matrix.
Actually, there are a lot of things to discuss, like uh, propagators and Feynman rules, etc., etc. Uh, but I'm going to short. Uh, maybe you can look at the uh, textbook for details. Scattering amplitude uh, matrix and scattering cross section. How to define scattering cross section? and how to compute them and also decay rate and then after uh, we knew how to define uh, the particle states how the field uh, acts on the state etc then we are uh, able to derive the Feynman rules and then we are going to compute uh, scattering amplitude scattering or so decay amplitude so these are actually the one hour lecture is not sufficient for one hour uh, but I'm going to discuss as far as I can the scattering amplitude and the decay decay amplitude and i will take a few examples like a decay process and a scattering process for scattering process i think that there is uh, i will uh, sketch the basic uh, formalism and then detailed calculations uh, maybe i can omit omit just i can show you the result and then uh, how I, I will tell you how to compute uh, like a Lorentz contraction, etc. So the well-known uh, problem uh, is the scattering amplitude from e plus e minus going to uh, mu mu one and time mu one pair, and also. Uh, mu on decay and also we are going to discuss chiral perturbation theory so I'm going to discuss uh, pi, uh, decay of charged pion of course in the Higgs in the case of Higgs we also have uh, Higgs decay into the fermion pair, etc. There are a lot to discuss, and also Higgs production. Actually, in the case of E plus E minus process, you can also think about a uh, pair of uh, charged scalars instead of. Uh, pair of charged, uh, charged fermions. So then you can see the difference between the production of the fermion pair and production of charged uh, uh, scalars. And what is the, and also these are all, uh, almost all the three level processes, we call three level. And then there are also loop processes Without uh, quantum field theory, uh, without quantum mechanics, this uh, loop process is not possible. So delta uh, mu g minus two, for instance, delta uh, delta g minus two, we call g a equal to g minus two over two, and <clears throat> X goes to gamma gamma gg and also, also delta rho. Uh, the electric or electric precision test and then gauge coupling uh, running uh, the vacuum polarization. So which uh, tells you like a uh, uh, hyperfine structure constant depends on the energy scales 
uh, <coughs> also loop processes. Uh, maybe uh, low in the low energy is it doesn't matter. But if you go to high energy, uh, Higgs mass, Higgs quartic coupling, also sensitive to the presence of new particles. So those are all, uh, they are all important processes. Also three level process here, there are uh, most of standard model particles are unstable, except proton and electron. So, uh, so proton and electron, they are stable because they are, uh, because of the electromagnetism. So they are uh, lightest uh, charged particle and, and hadron and lepton. So they are stable except those two particles. Uh, all, all, the, all the standard the particles are unstable. So also W boson also uh, unstable. Double boson decays into uh, so there are uh, 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 mute mute to lepton leptonic channel and hadronic channel uh, so this side uh, and then. G boson, uh, electronic channel, and so other channels. So those are all uh, uh, present in the standard model. So, uh, so there are, there are uh, everything is quantum field theory. You have to learn uh, how to compute them. So let me uh, go back to the chiral perturbation theory first, and then I will finish up the discussion, our discussion. So as I said before, uh, so we call it chiral in the sense that uh, the left-handed core and then right-handed core rotate independently. So we call this matrix L and R, and then L belongs to SU3 left, R belongs to SU3 R. And here the Q, there are three flavors. So Q, L uh, stand for the left-handed uh, three flavors. The three flavor, uh, so we have a three flavors, the U, D, S, and uh, so these are three particles. So, uh, so this uh, quark. Uh, so in the case of quarks, you can define uh, transformation um, of the quarks under the global. These are all global symmetries. So they transform independent of position. They transform in the same way, uh, independent, independent of positions. So this is uh, this chiral theory, chiral, uh, therefore, uh, we call this uh, product of these two global symmetries, uh, the chiral symmetry. of the of QCD chiral theory chiral symmetry of QCD so this uh, uh, exact 
when uh, when the the Kong mass is uh, zero, all the Kong masses are zero. So this is exact. Uh, it's broken spontaneously. Spontaneous. Due to uh, due to uh, quark condensate, so quark condensate is the kind of uh, the chemical expectation value uh, of the Higgs Higgs field. So quark condensate is the In general, you can take the bilinear uh, right-handed quark and left-handed quark. Uh, you can compose this uh, this bilinear. We call this bilinear uh, of two uh, two fermions, and those vacuum expectation value taken to be diagonal direction. So diagonalized then you can break the chiral symmetry spontaneously to the diagonal uh, subgroup. Okay, so diagonal subgroup. So we call this is diagonal uh, subgroup of the big, the big uh, flavor symmetry, diagonal subgroup. So, so this uh, diagonal subgroup with the restriction that the uh, left-handed and right-handed transformations are the same, okay? So left-handed and right-handed in principle, they come with a different transformation uh, parameter. So this one is uh, like a T, L, and set, uh, L and this uh, uh, it to the mass the T A R theta R A. So in general, these transformation parameters they are uh, independent. But if uh, these transformation parameters are the same, uh, For the all the generators, so this A run, so this A runs uh, the number of generators of SU three group, which are which is the eight, right? So with that cons uh, cons restriction, you can reduce uh, the full flavor symmetry down to this SU three uh, subgroup. So that means the you are not uh, rotating uh, independently left and right quarks. You are rotating in the same way. So the full the quark is now let's say uh, the now Dirac spinner. So we can define let's say Dirac spinner uh, this way. So this study uh, spinners. So so as really rem remember, we can decompose that there, there are four component drug spinners into two pieces. So now left and right can be independent with our masses. Uh, but we can combine them to define the flavor symmetry. So now flavor symmetry is the quark, the U, D, S. So we are rotating uh, this uh, uh, fully, Dirac spinners, 
that means the left-handed and right-handed, they transform in the same way. So then this V belongs to SVV. So spontaneous breaking. So in, in general, you can rotate this quark left-handed, quark right-handed, transform independently, but that uh, general transformation do not preserve this form of the condensate. So in order to, uh, so invariant, so vacuum, in order to make this uh, condensate invariant under the uh, chiral transformation, you need to choose particular transformation, right? So, and then the, the if you break it, then that corresponds to the uh, uh, kind of broken generators. So as a consequence, so as a consequence of spontaneous symmetry breaking, in general, global symmetry, these are continuous. If it is continuous, there is no, uh, so according to the Goldstone theorem, so I didn't give you a, a general proof, but there is a general proof. The Goldstone theorem tells you that uh, there are uh, Goldstone bosons, as this. Bosons. Uh, so number of massless Goldstone bosons are uh, equal to the number of broken generators. So number of broken generators, so SU3 flavor, SU cross right, broken down to SU3, three. So, so we have eight, eight, uh, uh, generators and SU3, we have eight. The difference is the eight. Therefore, Goldstone bosons, GBs. Eight Goldstone bosons. So, those we call these measurements. Okay. So, measurements. And so, normally we call the measurements live on. This uh, so we call this we call uh, this kind of so when you think about kind of you can think about space in gold in the in the, the space in the goldstone bosons the field space uh, with the goldstone bosons so goldstone goldstone bosons live on this space uh, this is the uh, uh, some some technical work. This is the uh, space kind of coordinate. Goldstone bosons are coordinate in this coset space, and the Goldstone is the direction of the uh, direction along the degenerate uh, vacuum states, and you don't cost energy. Uh, so then, uh, Goldstones. How to describe the uh, uh, Goldstone bosons? Mejon, we call the Mejon. Mejon octet. So Mejon octet uh, sigma. This uh, field. And F here is the uh, major decay constant. So we call this a decay constant because uh, F, uh, the decay rate or lifetime of major depends on this parameter F. So F is the dimension one. 
SMS dimension one. So F SMS dimension one. And uh, this pi is a matrix. So pi is matrix, and this is given by uh, this one sum over the all the generators. So TA is a broken generators belonging to the vector, SU3 vector, diagonal subgroup. Uh, so this uh, rid of them. And this uh, generators satisfy certain normalization condition, which is given by this one. So this normalization depends on the representation. So here, um, uh, so three by three matrix form. So therefore this uh, kind of uh, uh, um, the fundamental representation of the matrix form. So minimal, we call the minimal form. So three by three, so TA is the three by three and TA equal to, so this is a Gelman, uh, Gelman matrix. So, well, I will discuss uh, the form, the form, form of the gamma matrix system later. In the later discussion, so when L and R are equal, then this sigma transform in this way. It to the i pi over f and v dega. So you can take the conjugate v and v dega. Maybe it's uh, similar to. Uh, this kind of transformation you have already seen, the, the field strength tensor, so if, uh, you know. uh, this, uh, so field strength tensor uh, also transforms under the gauge transformation. At the time we have, so define Fill this transpense in this form. So this is a unitary uh, transformation. Uh, yeah, in this case, so this F mu nu, uh, uh, maybe a gauge field is SU2 or SU3, SU2, SU to L or SU3 color. Okay, field strengths. So in this case, you can see this uh, other joint, we call this other joint uh, representation. The transformation so the similar, we have uh, just uh, uh, in this case, the, this theta is a function of x, but now we have uh, uh, this v also depends on uh, f. Let's say v. So those are so independent of uh, coordinate. That is the difference. But global and local, the difference is the whether the transformation parameters are function of space time or not. So only that, that difference, actually if we dagger, so you can take this, that that is a unitary transformation. So there's no difference. So then uh, you can uh, expand uh, this exponential, tail expansion, and you can take the v v dagger, uh, you can take this expansion, tail expansion, um, the sandwich uh, 
between V and V Dega, you can notice that this is nothing but uh, uh, replacing uh, the pion field in the exponent by this this way. So the originally uh, we have got this form and then the net effect of sandwiching this V V dagger on this uh, matrix, uh, imagine uh, state, imagine field, sorry, not state, imagine field, then this is the pion transforms in this way. The full matrix changes in this form. So in the next last lecture, we uh, took the form, particular form of the uh, measurements. So, so these measurements, as I said, there are eight uh, Goldstone versions. So these are real uh, degree of freedom. But the uh, depending on the eigenvalues of uh, T three i uh, or this depending on i three and y, so you can define uh, so quantum numbers. These are uh, isospin sorry. quantum numbers of the measurement states. It's so not only measurement, but also nucleons also. You can assign particular charges. So kind, kind of global charges in this case. Um, so this I3 is ISO spin, and Y is the hyper charge. This hypercharge is uh, similar to weak hypercharge, but here there is no lepton, only quarks. So that is the difference. And this I3 equal to uh, twice T3. So this is lambda 3. So lambda 3 is the 1 plus 1. Zero. So this is the diagonal. And why hypercharge is uh, nothing but twice T3, the eighth component of the generator. That is the, the gamma matrix lambda eight, which is one of the square root of three, one, one minus two, zero, zero, zero. Then uh, actually, uh, expl I mean, the, you, are, you have not, uh, seen already from the textbook how to uh, decompose uh, measure octet states. So ba basically, major octet states is the in group theory, it's a direct product of the uh, three and three bar. So three bar. It's a U, T, S, and three, three is a U, D, S, and three bar is a U bar, T bar, S bar. So three, uh, so kind of a multiple composed of three states, U, T, S. So then this uh, thing decomposed into this one, these states. So we are referring to this eight, so this uh, imagine octet. So in measure octet, uh, in the diagram, you can draw the diagram. Uh, so measure octet state in the, you can draw this uh, in the space of uh, isospin and hypercharge. So 
here are that uh there are two one so you so the major state will be sit on this polygon so this uh one two the octa oct octagon so there are uh one two three four five six seven. what is the one two <laughs> how many how, how many i think it is hexagon maybe mm, hexagon hexagon okay so uh so then there are uh so this is minus one plus one plus one plus one and i think that this uh because the eta pi zero they carry the same isospin and hypercharge so so just we are drawing this way so they are located at the at the origin then pi on pi minus pi plus and k zero k plus and k minus and k zero so this hypercharge is also identical to the strangeness and uh, when the 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 major state carry strange quark in it then you are we are going along this y direction and okay i think that this is every everything so then you can describe this all the particles as composite like this let's say for instance this uh charge pion this composite particle of u body and this uh u d bar and then k on charge k on u s bar k neutral k on is the d s bar this uh In this way so and then it's so a neutral uh, these are neutral measures combination of u and d and u d s but i'm not writing this explicitly so so there's a group theory uh to to describe this uh space uh in this uh, kind of lattice uh, uh, space, isospin, and hypercharge. And then uh, this is a kind of dynamic diagrammatic description of the Meson octet. But in the matrix form, it can be written down in this way. Yeah, this way. Okay. So you can notice that the charged pion, charged states are kind of complex field. Also, so this k zero, k zero bar, they are neutral but complex because the strangeness. One is plus, one is minus. There are different quantum numbers uh, under the strangeness. So there's a complex field. The off-diagonal component are all complex. And this eta pi zero and eta is a uh, neutral. I mean neutral in the sense that the isospin uh, zero. So maybe really, I mean the also electromagnetism here we don't introduce electromagnetism yet 
uh, but uh, this the way of uh, writing down uh, so they are classified uh, uh, in terms of the electromagnetic charges the neutral uh, uh, scalars real scalar And here, if you pick up only pi zero and eta, you see that uh, they are belong to pi on uh, in a particular uh, form. So in the case of neutral pi on, you see, uh, this is the one minus one, uh, zero. So these are um, uh, by general T three belongs to the full to full uh, major. Uh, it belongs to in this particular form. So T three, and that in the case of eta major. Uh, you see, uh, one and I, I'm sorry, just one plus two. So this is the, um, uh, uh, what was the T3, T3, lambda 3, so this is yes. T3 twice, twice, this, uh, uh, what was that, uh, this is the uh, eta twice T also belongs to Measure. Yeah, you can notice that this one, the neutron pion, the T3 and a, a T8. Uh. <clears throat> okay, uh, but as I said, uh, the mass term. Uh, we have a non-zero quang masses. So quang masses are non-zero. So uh, the quang mass can be written down in this form. And this is the Decomposed into this right handed and left handed. Uh, so you can easily see that uh, this mi j equal to diagonal. Uh, therefore, uh, the, the the chiral symmetry is broken explicitly. So broken so the measurements are not uh, exactly Goldstone, the measure is the shoot ball. So you put shoot off because it's not exactly Goldstone, but the shoot off, almost, almost Goldstone, almost Goldstones. And this matrix, so Kong mass, mat Kong mass matrix, uh, we can, if you uh, promote to the dynamical field, The 
to the M transform this way under the previous metry. dynamical field. So maybe this guy transforms uh, in this particular form, then uh, we call this is the spurium. So then in this case, Q uh, bar Q, uh, so chiral invariant. So this is R L So chiral symmetry is very important in describing uh, the low energy Lagrangian for measurements. So now uh, let me uh, discuss the chiral Lagrangian. So we are imposing first condition is the uh, same Chiral symmetry has QCD. So in the limit of uh, quark masses, uh, in the limit of vanishing quark mass, quark masses, uh, we impose the uh, measure transform under. Uh, the chiral trans chiral symmetry. So this left and right, they are, as I said, this uh, belongs to SU3R, SU3Left. So this is a requirement. And then symmetry uh, breaking effect. Uh, uh, introduced due to the non-zero masses. So non-zero masses, we require that the mass is kind of spurion, so so that uh, we want to make the Lagrangian chiral invariant. So we we impose the mass term. Mass term is also uh, invariant. And also this chiral Lagrangian. It's the effective Lagrangian. So this is the effective, uh, effective theory is a limitation So effective theory, so there's the cutoff scale. You can think of this is the maximum energy scale until which our description is valid. So that is the cutoff scale is about order of one GV. So this corresponds to uh, some, uh, we are ignoring some, uh, some states that are also present. Uh, so let's see. Some excited states like a uh, low major, like spin one uh, states, and K star, excited K1, and that omega major, eta prime, eta prime is the shooter scala, but uh, it's uh, heavy, <coughs> heavier than uh, major states. So we are ignoring those states because of that, uh, we are not really describing the full uh, QCD. So, 
this kind of QCD, but we are describing part of the QCD. So that's why uh, that we need to, we, our description uh, is valid up to a certain order. So as I said, the higher dimension, we can add higher dimensional uh, local operators. So whenever you have higher dimensional operators, then you have something unknown. So these are uh, uh, expanded. Higher dimensional operators can be expanded in powers of momentum divided by cutoff or pion mass, pion mass divided by uh, cutoff scale. So then you can take the arbitrary power of this and you truncate the series expansion and you keep only the finite number of operators. And so if you increase energy scale, you need to increase uh, number of uh, local operators. So kind of the irrelevant relevant operators depends on the energy scales. So now uh, let me talk about the low energy, lowest order. So what is the lowest order Lagrangian? So L0. So you can take, uh, you need the, here the, we are requiring the chiral symmetry. So chiral symmetry is powerful. So we we want so here this is lowest order contains the connected terms. So lowest order must contain connected terms. But uh, we want the chiral symmetry uh, is not uh, broken. We want the kind of symmetry is not broken. So this is sigma equal to to the to pi to i pi. this one so then sigma uh, is the exponential field so if we, for small pi small pi sorry we can expand it in a tail expansion Uh, then this uh, is uh, this is the expanded. So this is the expansion. So it, it contains. If you keep expanding, you are including even higher dimensional uh, operators. But you need to stop at some point. So this Lagrangian, you can after expanding. Uh, so this round of course, this round so mu mu low energy contraction. Mu. And plus so. So in this expand, you can see there's a connect, connected term here. So this connected term, uh, place of T A T B equal to. So we did this normalization. This nothing but the uh, so connected term of the of the pion field. And what about this? This the uh, there are four pi pi round pi round pi. So this is the uh, contact interaction. So four 
매점 contact interactions. <laughs> Then <clears throat> this is the and a self scattering self interaction. Then coefficient here, the coefficient of the self interaction depends on the decay constant. So interaction strengths uh, can be determined by this F. Now I'm going to discuss the uh, 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 in how to determine a decay constant F. So, of course, the, in principle, you can determine the maybe if you have a measure the beams and let them collide. And then you can measure the scattering angle of measures, and then you can determine the strengths of, of these four point interactions. But instead, uh, you can determine F by another processes, which is the decay of charged pion to muon and anti neutrino. Muon and tiny neutrino. So this is the dominant decay mode for a charged uh, charged pion. So effective Lagrangian for at the level of quark QCD. And then now we integrated out. Uh, uh, what is this W boson? Okay, so W boson. Integrate our means. Uh, we are in the energy scale. Much smaller than W water mass scale. But QCD means the quarks uh, effective degree of freedom. Then the effective Lagrangian to describe this process is the Fermi interaction. And plus mission conjugate. So here is the U uh, VD. Uh, U VD uh, is the KM matrix. Uh, so this is KM matrix. So Kabibo angle. So this is the Kabibo Kabibo angle dependence. So so if Kabibo angle equal to zero, then just U uh this equal to zero so u sub uh, v sub ud equal to zero in the absence of copy angle in any case this uh, due to the quant mixing so the down type quark the uh, uh, down quark and strange quant mixing so this is the effective Lagrangian, but here, as I said, in when we want to describe this decay mode, the quarks are not the a good degree of freedom because they are interacting strongly and then they are from bound state. It's a neutral, so which is the charge pion. Then how to match between QCD to chiral perturbation theory. So now uh, in short name, uh, the chiral perturbation CHPT, how to match between these two. Uh, so we call the matrix element. So when we talk about certain processes, let's say the matrix element means the probability 
for this decay mode uh, process to happen. Uh, so, so decay to call decay amplitude or probability m equal to take the uh, uh, final state, define final state to be muon and anti-muon pair and take the effect of Lagrangian times uh, I and then initial state is charged by I. And then uh, this is the, oops, okay. Just you can plug this uh, effect of Lagrangian uh, in this uh, here, then And then you can decompose this matrix element, matrix kind of matrix, so matrix uh, because there are many. In principle, you have a many states in the initial and final, uh, but they choose particular state in the initial state, and then particular state in the final state. Oops, oops, oops. And say uh, pi pi on carries certain momentum p. Then you can decompose into um, into this. This the zero is the vacuum state. So you are creating a muon anti muon pair from the vacuum. And then you are the second part is the uh, annihilating charged pi on into vacuum. There's not, nothing. But the discharge pion will be converted to muon and tangent pair. So then uh, then here you can see uh, these two matrix elements are decomposed into two pieces. And this uh, second term, you can write down in this way. So I think that just for because of the uh, range invariance, range covariant, and in the sense that this, if you have a mu index, that is the four vector. Then what is the four vector? In this process, it's momentum of the charge pion. And the coefficient of this, uh, you can choose any, any free parameter. Okay, so what uh, we, does, we decided to choose uh, the decay constant F pi. So this F sub pi is a pi F that appears in the uh, measurement octet. But we, I want to be more precise uh, why this kind of operator, kind of quark, anti-quark, bilinear uh, operator can be matched to uh, momentum, full momentum. So experimentally, but in any case, the matrix element you can com compute. Therefore, suppose this is true, and then matrix element is the uh, GF, just computation. And... Well, I didn't explain why it's U and V, but I'm going to explain this. Uh, the later discussion just to you uh, is the uh, creation of uh, muon muon wave function and this is the anti neutrino wave function uh, so this is the uh, and then uh, you know in the end uh, if you want to compute uh, the decay rate, you need to take the square of it. And just I'm writing the, uh, the computation will be done later on, but uh, let me just write down. Uh, okay, I think that this is the, 
I'm going, I, maybe it's too early to say. Uh, so let me just give you a result. So after, after maybe one page calculation, after one page calculation, you will obtain this the decay called decay amplitude scale in this form in terms of this uh, uh, F, GF is Fermi constant, F pi is the uh, major decay constant, mu mass, pi on mass, etc. And from there, the decay rate, decay rate of the uh, Uh, child pion is the inverse of the lifetime. So this decay rate <coughs> written down explicitly. So in, maybe just the, uh, the formula. So decay rate is given by And this is the, uh, if you plug this uh, result, So this is the final uh, result. So this uh, decay rate, pi on going to uh, muon and time muon, neutrino, neutrino. Result. So of course, the uh, if you replace uh, muon and time muon to, I'm uh, sorry, electron, electron neutrino, the same interaction. So just the same interaction, uh, then, but the only difference is the, the mass difference is the electron and muon, they, are, they have different masses. So same process. Now uh, electron mass. So this is the return then. So therefore, if we take the ratio. In comparison to the pion decaying to muon and time muon neutrino pair, uh, the ratio of the decay rate just to, depends on the lepton masses. So, So here the the major masses, the charged pion pion major masses, this uh, one hundred. Uh, yeah, the, let me. I give. I think the rock, the good uh, one hundred forty. I do charge pion masses one hundred forty. Actually, yeah, just from uh, from the, the this, this result, actually this is the dominant, as I said, 
So from there, we can determine uh, ion uh, decay. The lifetime measurement, we can determine uh, this decay constant. Decay constant equal to 92 plus minus 0.25 mm. So decay constant. In this way, you can measure decay constant. And, and here, this value is equal to the ratio of the decay rate is about 10 to minus 4. Because there's this mass difference. So electron mass. 0.511 mV and your mass is equal to 0.5. about 200 times larger. The muon is 200 times larger because of the, if you take the ratio, you can see this. And so this chirality kind of flipping course. This is the electron mass square. Uh, it's proportional to electron mass square. So it depends on the chirality uh, flipping. Without masses, this process, if we, if we have a zero electron mass, for instance, this process do not happen, does not happen. Uh, okay, so uh, before, uh, Maybe I have several things to discuss, and uh, I think the that's matching the one one thing to to match between, uh, as I said, this the matching between QCD and chiral perturbation theory. How to match these two, and then we can uh, match them by. Uh, by uh, Neto theorem. So Neto theorem, uh, we have a Neto current. Then we have a, uh, a symmetry. We have a, we have a conjoint of charges record. Conjoint charges, conjoint current. Or this is the net So net current in general, uh, uh, if you have a transformation of the field. They say in the infinitesimal. Let's say if you think about uh, infinitesimal. So this is symmetry cannot be discrete. So this is continuous, must be continuous symmetry. Then you have conjoint current and infinitesimal. You can, because of that, because it is continuous, you can uh, define the infinitesimal small uh, transformation. Here I omitted a uh, small, uh, so here, if you uh, think, let's say this is exponentiated T A delta A. So you can think about this kind of transformation, and exponentiated, and then expand it. And here, I omit this uh, zeta parameter here, just to, uh, this, Changes with respect to uh, theta. So this is the delta theta. Okay. So just uh, it is hidden somewhere, but uh, just uh, because the transformation parameter is not important, the value of transformation parameter. So then the net current is defined from if you have a Lagrangian.
So this I stands for multiple of them, multiple fields. They are transforming uh, in this way. Then, then you can construct uh, network current. So this is the network current, which is satisfies the joint divergence free condition. So I don't know if you are familiar with this notation, but in quantum mechanics, you also have, or electromagnetic current, you also have this kind of uh, conjunct current to, uh, equation. So, <clears throat> so this is the network current. So here, uh, the in the case of uh, matching up when in the when we want to match the operators. You can notice that uh, this particular combination of U and D is the network current. Combination of two network current. So this network current is J mu L A equal to Q bar so this is the network current so network current for SU three left. So this TA is SU three generators. Okay, so we have a global symmetry if quantum mass is not zero. And uh, this global symmetry can be defined at the level of quarks, but you, you can also define this symmetry at the level of measurements. So now we are uh, just this is the result of uh, letter theorem. Uh, this particular combination uh, is given by the sum of the letter current. And this Q stands for U T strange, so triplet. And then T is just, uh, remember T A is the generators, three by three matrix. So T, uh, let's say one. So so one, there's one and one, one and second, sec first and second component. The first component is the um, zero. Where's the zero one one. And T two, so from that you can uh, show that this is true. Okay, so uh, also uh, in the leading uh, Lagrangian, the the chiral perturbation theory L zero. I mean this matching operator. It's the letter current from derived from the Q quark Lagrangian. So this, is, which is the uh, just uh, we have a uh, kinetic term uh, uh, Dirac Lagrangian Q bar. Uh, uh, you can derive uh this uh, the network current from the quark Lagrangian and the chiral perturbation theory so you it is enough to define the transformation property 
So here delta, of course here, in this case, uh, delta QL uh, transforms I T A Q L. But the Q R does not transform. Okay, so so this is the uh, transformation under the SU SU L. Okay, SU 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 L. Then you apply the Netto theorem to get the Netto current. Similarly, uh, in the case of so this is the let's say L L transformation L. And this is the, also this major field transform in this way, then you can apply the Netto theorem, the Netto current. You obtain this Netto current. And if you expand it, so, so again, pi on, so sigma equal to e to the two i pi over f. You just expand it again to pick up the leading term, leading non-trivial part. And you can get this one and there are higher the term, start up to uh, pi square, the letter current, okay. And then from there, twice, so this, the letter current takes us a different form. Right? At the level of quarks, the letter current can be written in terms of quarks, but here in the chiral perturbation theory, we have the same symmetry and then we can look for the letter current. So take the same combination of the letter current uh, which is the, uh, so here the trace here in it, okay, trace in it and trace of the, so this particular co combination is zero, one, zero, and round to pi and higher terms. Then, you know the, you know, you know the matrix form for pi, right? And then just do matrix multiplication. And then after that, you can get this result. So perfect. Uh, so then you see, uh, if you go back to this one, you see the same form, therefore, For u, uh, gamma u, one minus gamma five, d equal to square root of two, f round This is the, I call the operator. So this is the at the level operator means the uh, we, if you have a field I mean if you have uh, some operators written in terms of field then you need to something which is written in terms of field so here instead of quark we have a pion the pion pion and if you take the matrix now from the matrix uh, decay amplitude as we discussed before. So before, what was that? Zero pi u. Um, pi one minus two. So just to, if you replace this by operator, So this operator, what is the role of this operator is the annihilating, this annihilating. 
So annihilation. So for quantization, I think the, 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 in the discussion of quantization, let me tell you in more detail. Uh, but just to, just to you, you can uh, remember that if you have a field operator here, oops, then you can annihilate the state. Oops. You can annihilate the state into vacuum. So then you are left with, uh, oops, what is what's going on? So here that the derivative operator replaced by the momentum. So let's go to two. Uh, what was the I F I? Okay. So then we have full description at the level of operator, we have a matching and the matrix element, we uh, kind of infer that the coefficient must be related to the decay constant. So this, uh, so F sub pi is the F, our F appearing in the pion field. So this is the uh, kind of what I wanted to say. Mm. So another thing I that I didn't discuss is the uh, the major mass terms, uh, but let me make a little pause and then uh, continue to discuss about that. But uh, for theory, I think that this is the important how to describe major masses. So as I said, the if we Goldstone border, if we see exact Goldstone borders, uh, is the uh, series. But we know that this is not the case because of uh, quantum masses, pseudo Goldstone's massive, massive. So in that case, uh, what is the major mass terms? So um, here, the leading order Lagrangian here, chiral perturbation theory, there is no mass terms. So if you expand them, there is no pi square. So you need, you need to add the mass term by hand and then match them to the experiment. So, so this part, maybe I can discuss after, after uh, a break. Mm. Do you have any question? If not, so let's uh, resume our uh, lecture in five minutes, so 11.40, okay? Uh, I will finish this discussion on major mass terms. So major masses uh, break the flavor symmetry explicitly. Oops, so hard. My iPad is so hard. So, so major mass uh, matrix. So explicit mass terms at the level of quarks, quark Lagrangian contains uh, quark masses, right? So Q. L and Q R with the diagonal, so after diagonal I mean with the diagonal U D S masses, quark masses, this uh, M U S. So the the origin of uh major masses are quark masses, but not only quark masses but also uh some uh, the quark condensate. So not only this, but also quark, uh, uh, quark condensate plus. Condensate. So quark condensate, as we discussed, Q, uh, QL equal to lambda Q. So this quark condensation scale, so both M and lambda, so 
then the metal masses can be parameterized this way. So maybe it's a bit complicated. So lambda tilde uh, related to the uh, core condensation scale up to some C, uh, kind of unknown parameter, so you see. But the to be determined, unknown, but the to be determined in this uh, kind of effective uh, theory. So, here, this Lagrangian uh, invariant, if M matrix uh, transform this way, and and sigma transform. If you transform mass matrix and the pi or sigma, uh, if you transform these two at the same time, then from there, M sigma transforms L, R dagger, because uh, oh. mm, maybe it's, uh, it's not. Sorry, so maybe I there was something wrong. So, let me see. Mm, maybe there's some data. I think there's something wrong in this. So there should be data. Actually. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. So so data. So. So then in this, this combination transforms this way. So then you see uh, that uh, this is lambda tilde is just constant parameter. So trace of M sigma data uh, transforms trace L. So the L, L dega, the trace. So this is L dega. Change the order of multiplication. With identity, trace and So this is, this is invariant. So we can see that this is chiral invariant. This is how you construct, uh, even if you, this quark, uh, this mass matrix, quark mass matrix is not, uh, it's not field. You can take them as if they are field, spurlian field, and it, and then write down the effective Lagrangian uh, respecting the chiral symmetry. And then you can expand this uh, sigma, put it back, sigma equal to 2i pi over f, uh, and then expand it uh, to obtain all the masses, and then m equal to uh, diagonal m u m d m strange. So m u m d m s. So these are current quark masses. Then from there, you have charged pion mass lambda tilde. Over, oops. 
some of the uh, UD quang masses and It's so hard. Why is it so hard? It's not, it's not, it's not good, so I need to put. So charged K-ion. In the case of a uh, uh, neutral pion and neutron I mean, neutral pion and atom agon. Uh, there's a mixing. Uh, So those two by two matrix for pion and eta, neutral pion eta major, which leads to the mixing. Between these two neutron measures. So I think you can identify uh, from that expansion here, yeah, you can pick up the quadratic terms, like sigma, to e to the two pi and we multiply sigma okay see m times sigma bar M is M U change, and this is the uh, matrix multiplication. Two pi M. They take the trace, then you will uh, see. Uh, we see that uh, this quadratic term gives rise to the mass. So also uh, you have a higher order interactions. Yeah, also uh, major extra major interactions, which is non-derivative. in addition to L0. So L0 contains the derivative interactions, but here there's some extra interaction due to the explicit breaking terms. Okay, if you know the this kind of effective uh, on the chiral perturbation theory, it's now complete uh, at the leading order. So what you, what is necessary for describing the dynamical degree of freedom, connected terms and mass terms. And if you expand this interaction, you have all the uh, interaction terms. And also, I think you can add more, more terms in, uh, in addition to this leading order uh, interactions. So that is the chiral perturbation theory. Okay, and 
Okay, now uh, let me sh shift to the next topic. So there are uh, actually, uh, because some of you are not familiar with the Dirac field and the solutions to the Dirac equation. So let me repeat that uh, in this lecture uh, in, the, in a different representation for the gamma matrix. So uh, maybe it may be complementary to some of you because I taught the bio representation in some other lectures. So let me start from Dirac. Oops. It's very hot. The weather is very nice today, so maybe because of that. Oops. I'm worried about that. So my my iPad is so hot, so let me cool it. I have a fan. Let me cool it. Okay. Looks better. You guys. Your education. Mm. So let me go back to the basic uh, again and um, and then uh, I, I we don't have much time but uh, for basics. But the non non relativistic uh, we have total energy is given by this expression. Okay. So for that uh, particle wave particle duality, we replace energy by time derivative and momentum by uh, special derivative, so that uh, we have derived the. Uh, Uh, the Schrodinger equation, right? So, so this is uh, Schrodinger. So if you change it, this is called the dispersion relation between energy, between momentum and energy. So if you change this to relativistic case, so energy is scale equal to And then now, so these are quantum mechanics. So if you do the quantum mechanics, then you can obtain the corresponding equation, this equation, wave equation. So this is the thing about the klein golden equation. Uh, let's say c equal to h by equal to zero, one, sorry, then you can get uh, this one is the, the thing about the round the mu, round the mu, which is the eta mu mu. So this is a four-dimensional Dalton-Gaussian equation. So we this is the Klein Golden equation. But uh, there was a problem for uh, to in order to obtain the solution to Klein Golden equation in this form, plane wave style. So this is the e to the minus i energy t minus p in this form. So plane wave 
form because the, it's a free, uh, uh, free, uh, free. Uh, there is no interaction, so free uh, um, equation equation for the free field triangular field. If you look for the solution to this kind of uh, uh, wave function, then you notice that the uh, energy can be plus minus. So there are two solutions. Uh, there's negative energy. So then these two uh, Dirac proposed to uh, Dirac uh, equation, which is the uh, linear in in energy. Okay. So instead of uh, quadratic here, the uh, in the case of klein golden equation, it started from quadratic equation. That's why uh, there are two solutions. But if you have a linear equation, uh, he expected there is the only uh, productive energy solution. But uh, unlike still, you cannot avoid negative energy solution. Still, you have, still, you have negative, still, you have a negative energy solution. And this is the uh, entire particle. Describe the entire particle. So the right equation, the right is, uh, in the form of the Dirac uh, proposed, uh, this Dirac Hamiltonian is a, in, in, a, in a matrix form. In this way, and uh, if you uh, if you want to get the standard uh, dispersion relation for the uh, relativistic particles, you can take scale you can take the Hamiltonian scale then you will get the energy scale then you are asking uh, for the scale of this quantity to be a uh, momentum scale plus mass scale So from there, actually this, uh, we are asking for alpha and beta to be matrices. But in the beginning, you don't know what is the dimension of this matrix. Uh, uh, so you need to determine them. So then there are uh, three, uh, several, uh, three conditions to be satisfied in order to obtain this combination uh, after taking the square of these matrices. And then if you expand them, you see we have uh, this square twice, not twice, actually this matrix is so multiplication depends on the order of multiplication. So this is the M. In alpha, beta, beta, alpha, beta, P, plus beta, beta, beta. So, so here then you are asking this matrix square, alpha square equal to P square. And this combination vanish. And this is beta square equal to one identity. So from there, you got three conditions. The first uh, alpha B square equal to uh, 
in the unkind convention, you can write down this to be in this form, summation with the summation indexes. And then this written in this way. So this is a commutator r pi r j equal to uh, just to anti commutator and this anti commutator must be twice Kronecker delta to get this to be p square. So that is the first condition you can obtain. And the second condition is the, this is the first condition. The second condition was um, alpha i beta, beta. For arbitrary momentum, we require that the commutator of two metrics is identically zero. Or this, the second condition, and third condition is beta scale equal to identity. So if you look for, you can look for the matrices satisfying these three conditions. So therefore, alpha j equal to twice delta ij and ij one for one and one to three and Zero and okay. Actually, from the sec uh, first two equation, you can uh, because i j are not sum. So if you take i and j uh, to be equal, then you will get the i by i scale equal to again. This is identity. So these are two identity uh, matrices. So if you, this matrix is uh, n, n by n matrix, then you see that uh, from the first uh, alpha i scale equal to one identity and beta scale equal to identity, uh, the eigenvalues, of alpha or beta to be plus or minus one. So if alpha and beta, in general, they are not diagonalized. So if you diagonalize them, you can arrange the eigenvalues to be plus or minus one. And if you take the diagonalized alpha, alpha or beta, if you take the square of the diagonalized alpha or beta, you will get identity. So plus or minus. And the second condition is the, you can take the trace. So alpha beta i uh, equal to uh, beta i alpha, right? These are from the second condition. And from there, uh, you can, let's say, if you multiply by alpha, on the right hand side, we have alpha square. So alpha square, what is this? Sorry, indexes. Uh, okay. Index must be here. So this is minus beta. And if you take the trace, then this is the minus trace beta. But the, this, the trace, it doesn't depend the, on the cyclic permutation. So this is alpha i scale beta. Again, this is the equal to trace of beta. 
from there, you can say that the trace of beta equal to zero. Similarly, if you uh, multiply, uh, take the same equation, multiply beta on the right hand side. You see, uh, so this is the, on the left, the left hand side is the alpha i because beta square equal to identity. So you can again take the trace of alpha beta, alpha i beta, which is the minus trace of alpha i. The left hand side is the, you can again use the trace property to get trace of alpha i. So in conclusion, trace of alpha i equal to zero. So you know the, the eigenvalues are plus or minus one and the trace beta or trace alpha i, they are identically zero. Therefore, beta is eigenvalue, let's say plus one, minus one, plus one, minus one, da, 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 da. Then, the plus or minus one, they are pairing to cancel the trace of beta. So similarly, alpha takes the similar form because of that. So we assume n by n, so n must be even. So n by n, this is n by n matrix, n by n matrix, then n must be even. So uh, then the minimal choice, for the uh, matrix is n equal to two. But in, the, in this case, uh, n equal to two, we haven't used the first equation fully, the first condition here, the commutator of the special part. And uh, then we have to look for the two by two matrix to satisfy this condition. And we want to look for uh, two by two beta matrix satisfying this uh, condition. We know that the first condition can be satisfied if alpha i taken to be Pauli matrix. But uh, if you have a Pauli matrix, there is no independent, I uh, mean, just do you have an identity? So two by two complex, in general, two by two complex matrix can be written as a sum of identity and the sum of the identity and the Pauli matrices. So this A0 and the AI, those are constant. So this only remaining uh, option for beta is identity, but the, you know, the identity uh, commutator is, the, is not, uh, this second condition you cannot satisfy. So because of that, n is different from two, the next option is n equal to four. So that is the Dirac matrix. So in Dirac, we choose the, you can choose arbitrary matrix form. And if you uh, define the gamma matrix in this form, gamma i equal to, uh, so what is the form of the gamma matrix? Beta, you multiply by uh, okay. so gamma zero equal to beta and then gamma i equal to uh, let's say beta times alpha i and then you can uh, write down
uh, two uh, necessary conditions into single equation, these two equation becomes uh, gamma commutator, oops, anti-commutator of the gamma matrices. So, so we call this is Clifford algebra. So we are working in a particular basis. So actually you can choose arbitrary matrices. Uh, so gamma mu is nothing but gamma zero, gamma, we call this gamma. So this is gamma matrices. So we work, we are working on the representation. Uh, so gamma, uh, in, the, in the case of Dirac, he choose gamma i equal to zero sigma i. So in this uh, block form, uh, two by two sigma i zero zero, this is four by four matrix form, and beta equal to one zero zero minus one. So from there, uh, you can see that the gamma uh, zero equal to gamma zero, as I said, gamma zero is to identify with the beta, so one zero zero minus one, and then gamma i equal to beta alpha i, so beta one zero zero plus one, zero sigma i, sigma i zero, this is the uh, after matrix multiplication, this one. So you flip the sign in this uh, here, sigma i minus sigma i. And then in comparison, there is uh, another form of the Dirac mat the gamma matrices, uh, by representation. In this case, sigma, so this gamma, zero equal to zero, one, one, zero, gamma i equal to, take the same form. So the difference is that uh, there's also gamma five. So here, the gamma five is chiral operator, gamma five, space is independently defined in this form, the product of the all the gamma matrices. And you will notice that this is the uh, given by uh, the Dirac, uh, I think I don't remember what was the, I think that this one is the zero one. So in the case of Dirac representation, So in the case of the same uh, definition, uh, but if you take the violet representation, that is the minus one, two, one, violet representation. So the difference between the two representation is the interchanging between, um, so between, as, you, as you can see this uh, I special part is the same, in both cases, difference is the gamma zero, here gamma zero, and then gamma five, and gamma five. Then this uh, Dirac representation, you can see the gamma zero equal to, uh, see, one, zero, zero. So let me call this is the Dirac representation, D. So, and then by representation, Uh, this is zero, one. So you can see that uh, up to sign here, the 
kind of these are two uh, gamma zero, gamma five are uh, interchanged in the between the two representations. So supposed to be gamma zero in the direct representation becomes gamma five. Supposed to be gamma five in the direct representation becomes gamma zero. So you will notice that in the case of direct representation, it is uh, convenient for describing a relativistic particle in the case of the other way, I'm sorry, non-relativistic particle. And in the case of the, the, the viral representation, it's a relativistic. So depending on, uh, on, 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 on your interest, you can choose either direct or viral representation. Here, uh, direct, actually viral representation, direct representation is more convenient for finding the solution to the direct equation. So let me write down the direct equation in direct uh, representation. So by the way, the gamma matrix is here, in our case, four by four, right? This is four by four matrix. This is gamma matrix is uh, four dimensions because we are in four dimensional space time. So if you go to higher dimensions, like a 5D, 6D, et cetera, uh, extra dimension, if you introduce extra dimensions, then the gamma matrix is, uh, um, it depends on, you see the eta, this is the metric. So inverse, inverse metric. And um, uh, so in this case, uh, uh, you can take uh, uh, so in the case of five dimensions here the mu nu index now zero one two three and five spatial extra dimension so you need the uh, uh, for special component of the gamma matrix is, etc. So then, which I, uh, 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 if it make a bad uh, gamma zero to trace zero, could is five dimension could make could so five here, dimension here, make you need to keep zero. n equal to four in four D five D. So still uh, four by four, and actually, uh, but the, you have, you need the one more gamma matrix. But still four by four, but you don't have a chiral. Actually, still because uh, you are the dimension of gamma matrix in five dimension is four by four. Uh, it's a, it's a similar to. Uh, I mean, in this case. Uh, I mean, at least you can satisfy this condition. So I, I forgot to tell you that the, if gamma five in four dimension, gamma five is the, I, you know, okay, this one. So from there, you can show that the gamma five uh, anti-commute all the gamma matrices. <laughs> So you can just take the gamma five as the fifth component of the gamma matrix in 5D and then four by four, it means the same. Then at least you have a, a Clifford algebra in five dimensions, but in this case, there is no chiral operator. 5D, no. Uh, 
you know so you know chiral operator defined and 60 because of that there is no chirality in five dimensions that means if you have a from the four, four dimensional point of view if you have a left-handed fermion you also have to have a right-handed fermion at the same time so 5d in 5d there is no chirality so 60 uh, in the case of 60 you need to extend the dimension of the common matrix is to n equal to eight etc if you increase the special dimensions because of the requirement of the gamma matrices, you need to introduce extra uh, gamma matrix, gamma matrix to satisfy the Clifford algebra, extended Clifford algebra. So this one is uh, uh, interesting and in higher dimension up to, you can go to 10 dimension or 11 dimension. So. Clifford algebra in the sense is important and it's important for defining the number of uh, uh, spinner dimensions because the gamma matrix will act on spinners and the fermion so <clears throat> you can define the number of uh, dimensions of fermions in higher dimensions but this a uh, side remark so Dirac equation in Dirac representation Dirac equation in the original form, uh, in this way. So this is the first is the matrix equation. Because this alpha and beta, they are four by four. Because of that, the first sign is a column, four column vector. And then uh, you can look for the uh, eigenfunction to the direct equation solution type. You can look for the general solution as a plane wave solution, takes this form it to the uh, Actually, here we have already, so this is a time independent Dirac equation already. So original Dirac equation, something like this one. And then we are actually the Hamiltonian acting on the wave function gives you energy times uh, wave function. So this is the eigenvalue equation already we are looking for the eigenfunctions because this is the Hamiltonian is around the H. So this is the, um, the time independent, time dependent solution will be uh, this part. And here we are uh, asking for psi is the, to the SI ET times special part And uh, this oscillatory solution, so and the eigen the eigen functions. But then up, then we only have to solve this equation. And then the and then this is matrix form. So and then uh, this alpha and beta two by two black block uh, form. So we are introducing these two components spinners. Let me put them into the Dirac equation. So alpha i equal to zero sigma i, i zero, and beta equal to one minus one zero. So from there, the Dirac equation becomes um, zero sigma i pi. Uh, 
So energy. So, so this is the, uh, the matrix equation. <clears throat> So this is the M. So sigma, sigma, we call this as a scalar product. So then uh, you can expand them to write down. This two set of equations and the first is the productive energy solution so energy is productive Because the uh, the positive energy solution, in order to obtain that, uh, we set the momentum equal to zero. For massive particle, uh, we can always go to the rest frame of the particle. So particle momentum is set to zero. Then the above uh, uh, two set of equations become simpler. Here, uh, then uh, if energy is positive, then energy becomes just rest mass in the case of zero momentum, okay? So this equation becomes m chi, m psi. So from there, chi can be arbitrary, so chi is non zero, but the psi is identically zero. Therefore, we have obtained that uh, psi up to some normalization condition is proportional to this. So we have upper component, chi, describing the positive solution. For negative solution, the same way we go to the rest frame, then energy becomes minus of mass, so negative energy. Then, uh, so this is a negative. Solution. Then uh, I think that this way, this is uh, from, from this equation, the energy, before taking energy equal to M, so energy is negative. So energy is negative minus m chi. Because of that, chi equal to zero, but chi is not zero. So in this case, therefore, uh, this is the, uh, in the case of positive energy, this is particle solution. Uh, in this case, in the second case, this is the antiparticle solution. And for general momentum, you can obtain positive and negative in the general form. For this positive and negative solutions, in the case of violet presentation, we uh, I made the boost transformation. Also, Michael Peskin in his textbook he did also boost transformation uh, to non-zero momentum. But here it's very simple, so we don't have to do that. So here, uh, if you go back to the general form here, okay. If you decide to, in the case of positive uh, solution, you take chi. And you ask for the what is the remaining entry for non-zero momentum. Then you only have to express psi, psi in terms of chi. Let me go back. So here from, we can solve for uh, 
this equation crystal A can be solved for I can solve for psi in terms of chi. Okay, so then you put it that uh, solution to the to the second entry. Then you have chi only, right? And this chi, I forgot to say that the chi can be uh, two component spin. So in general, uh, one zero or one zero one. Okay, we call this is chi s. So when okay s equal to one, okay, this is chi s. Is equal to one, two. So up and down, this day up and down, two states. We have a particle stays up and down, spin up and down. This one is down, right? Spin, up. spin down, spin up, two degree of freedom. So in any case, here we can put some S here. S. Okay, and uh, for negative energy solution, we know that psi, and we can ask for the valid form of the uh, first entry. Then you can go back. Now we are using this uh, first equation to write down chi uh, and energy as n. Xi. And here we know that this is a negative energy solution. So, uh, so just energy can be written minus of absolute value of energy. So then this is minus, you know, so we have a minus sign, overall minus sign. So minus uh, so this is the again okay, chi and uh, minus uh, again this psi also has a two component so and let me put this s s, s. Okay, so uh, this is the uh, uh, general general solution. And then uh, we we can uh, determine the normalization uh, constant is n. This n is normalization. So we choose the normalization condition. Uh, so energy. So this is uh, the uh, uh, probability density. Probability density uh, equal to two times energy. So with this uh, normalization condition uh, for both positive and negative energy. So for For positive energy, and you can also notice that if you take this 
solution for the negative energy solution you yeah, will get this. Then, uh, for instance, uh, productive energy solution. Psi. This is n scale. Psi theta is the chi theta. Yeah, this is the uh, uh, <clears throat> so uh, then then. Can write the, the product in this form, and this uh, sigma k. Uh, this is nothing but p square uh, from the property of the uh, Pauli matrix sigma i j. So this is the e square minus m square. So this, actually, we can put uh, SS, uh, SS here. As the SS, if S are different, they are, they are, I think, uh, they are identical zero. So if you take the S same uh, spin off uh, indexes, there's the S, S. Everybody put S spin off. So this is one for, for spin up or spin down. And this combination is the uh, twice. What is this? This uh, Nice scale. This is the thing about twice. Um, so we we what we are asking this to be twice energy. Therefore, normalization go to scale root of energy. So this is the positive and the negative energy solution. And this N equal to, you can follow the similar step by taking this one. Then <clears throat> this is the, Therefore, the normalized the productive twice the square root of e plus n. And 
ना थे वो So this solution we call U uh, or P momentum. This is the three uh, the uh, the So in general, uh, the general solution is the uh, sum of the two solutions. So you general time, I'm including the time dependence also. So general solution will be sum of the momentum, all the, you need to add all the possibilities. And so this is the, okay. of course there's some spin index. If you put, include the spins, you can, the spins here, you also have to sum of the spins. So S, uh, this is the E to the, uh plus e t plus t maybe let me put minus sign just to for for convention so uh, u v s p so this is the product here right put up here so it's a negative, so I, E, uh, so negative solution. So this is the written down in this way. But here we take all the positive energy So although uh, this negative energy solution, uh, you can uh, uh, interpret them as the uh, productive energy solution, but uh, it's moving back in time. So let me say what is the meaning of that. So this, uh, uh, They can flip the momentum direction. Uh, you can take the opposite direction for momentum. And okay, you can write down in this way, right? Because you need to sum of uh, all the momentum, but so the sum of the summation doesn't depend on the direction of direction of momentum. So you just you can change it. Uh, so then uh, this is the the covariant notation. So in the range contraction form, this is the, written in this form. So here, p dot x, oops, p dot x equal to e t. And here uh, in this level, 
you have only productive energy. Because here the uh, the energy already this energy is positive, so this energy appearing in this combination is always positive. So you have a positive energy solution, but this second solution, uh, as you remember, is uh, moving backward in time, the momentum direction. Is opposite. Uh, I mean, elect kind of. You, if you take this, this electron, the first solution is electron. The second solution is the electron moving back in time, and then moving forward. Uh, that is the positron. If you electron, yeah. Okay, so this is the general solution. And then we are going to uh, quantize the step next to the lecture. And the remaining thing to do is the Okay, so yeah, I think that I don't I don't have much time to discuss. The reason that I'm discussing about this, this drug solution is the uh, it is important uh, for the later uh, lectures. So maybe I need to spend some time about that. Then, okay. Okay. So uh, let, let's continue uh, uh, after mid one week. And um, yeah, do you have any question? Uh, not related to today's lecture, but uh, it looks like there is something, uh, how to say, I'm sorry, I like to speak Korean. Yeah, okay. The mm. Damian Suop has a connection with the Damian Suop. I just wanted to say it to Haechang Yusuf, but is it today? 그, 그 동의서를 지금 했어야 되나요? 모르고 있었는데. 저도 모르겠습니다. 음. 관련 수업을 진행하려면 학생들이 모두 동의서를 제출해야 되는데 그 마감이 오늘이라고 하셨습니다. 음. 그러면 일단 동의서를 내야 이제 우리가 나중에 